There's a new golden age of flight on the horizon where a journey to the other side of the globe could be reduced to just a few hours. By as early as 2024, hypersonic aircraft startup Hermius say their quarter horse jets will be traveling above Mark IV, four times the speed of sound. This capability comes from their recently unveiled Chimera dual purpose engine that could convert from turbojet to a ramjet in flight, meaning no longer will these sorts of speeds require rocket assist. Today, we're gonna to look at whether this may unlock the dawn of hypersonic travel. Most commercial aircraft currently cruise around 550 miles an hour. That's around Mark 0.7, which means a direct flight from London to New York about 3,500 miles takes around eight hours. We've long chased maximum speed records. NASA's unmanned X-43A hit Mark 9.6, about 6,800 miles an hour, for all of a few seconds back in 2004. In 2013, the Boeing X-51, another unmanned experimental aircraft, flew at a lower speed, Mark 5.1, around 3,400 miles an hour, but managed to do so for over three minutes. Both aircraft, however, had to be launched from altitude by a B-52 bomber, then brought up to speed by a rocket. Maybe not the most practical way to get from A to B. Even today, most military fighter jets only manage top speeds of between Mark II to 2.8, but commercial flights have only seen short-lived glimpses of Mark speeds. Three, two, one, zero. She flew on the edge of space at twice the speed of sound, outrunning even military jets. Concorde, the fastest commercial plane ever, was launched in 1976, but was grounded 27 years later in 2003. Reaching top speeds of Mark II, it could reduce a flight from London to New York to about three hours, and carried around 100 passengers. However, the revolutionary supersonic jet faced friction that even its engines couldn't power through, you're welcome. Breaking the sound barrier caused a supersonic boom, which UK parliamentary records say caused the elderly to fall over, windows and greenhouses to shatter, and damage to livestock, leading supersonic flight to be outlawed over populated areas. A transatlantic flight also burned up one ton of jet fuel per seat, so the average round-trip cost was about $40,000 in today's money. The straw that broke Concorde's back, however, was an accident in 2000, which saw the whole fleet grounded for a year for fear of a systemic failure in Concorde's design. By 2003, the future of supersonic air travel was now a moment in history. In Atlanta, Georgia, a relatively small startup, Hermius, is promising sustained Mark V flight powered by their proprietary turbine-based combined cycle engine. Their first aircraft, Quarter Horse, will be an unmanned military aircraft built to prove their system's in-flight capabilities. The Quarter Horse is scheduled for test flights starting in 2024, but by 2029, the plan is to open an even faster flight to commercial travelers with their Halcyon passenger plane. The core of their platform is the Chimera engine, which is capable of switching from operating as a turbojet engine to a ramjet engine. A turbojet is an air-breathing jet engine which is typically used in modern aircraft. Air enters via a large intake fan. Some of the air is accelerated directly out the back of the engine to provide thrust, while the rest is directed into the compressor where a series of fan blades slow it down and increase its density to improve the combustion efficiency. The compressed air is mixed with fuel and ignited, creating an expanding hot gas which drives a turbine, producing the mechanical energy to drive the intake fan and the compressor blades. The remaining emerging hot gas is vented to generate further thrust. But this engine is only capable of getting the vehicle up to about Mark II. To reach its Mark V goal, a ramjet engine is needed. 
A ramjet is conceptually similar, but structurally very different from a jet engine. It doesn't have a compressor, propeller, or turbine. Instead, it just uses the forward motion of the engine to provide thrust with no major moving parts. As air hits the engine traveling at supersonic speed, it creates a series of shockwaves around the engine's entrance. These shockwaves form a high pressure cone, increasing the air's density and funneling it into the combustion chamber. This is the ram effect. It increases the mass of the air moving through the engine, giving it more power. The air is combined with fuel and ignited in the combustion chamber, and the exhaust gases are exited through an exhaust nozzle, producing thrust for the engine. However, a ramjet only starts to work around Mark III, as it needs high speeds to generate the shockwaves and air volume for efficient combustion and thrust. Ramjet powered vehicles as a result usually require assisted takeoff like rocket assist to accelerate up to this speed to the point where they start to become efficient. But the jet engine is only capable of accelerating up to Mark II. So the Chimera engine needs a way to bridge the gap between these two speeds. In order to understand how it does that, we need to understand the reasons for the inefficiencies in the jet engine. This really comes from two reasons. One, because the air reaching the engine must be subsonic, so the intake system is designed to slow air entering the intake to increase its density and its combustion efficiency. Above a certain speed, the engine creates more drag slowing down the air than it can produce in thrust. The second reason, because the intake system slows down this incoming air, it also increases the air's temperature. At some point, the air becomes too hot for the engine to handle. To travel faster than the design limitations of the turbojet engine, Chimera employs two tactics. First, a pre-cooler system reduces the temperature of the air coming into the turbojet, which allows the Chimera engine to squeeze out a bit more performance from the turbojet. Chimera's second tactic is to only gradually switch over to the ramjet operation. The pre-cooler and jet engine and the ramjet engine, both operating outside of their efficient operational speeds, are just enough to accelerate up to Mark III, where the ramjet starts operating efficiently and Chimera can then bypass the incoming air around the turbojet to allow the ramjet to take over completely. If this sounds complicated, there's a reason no one's been able to do this before. Now, while the Chimera engine had to be built from the ground up, we've been capable of making aircraft that can withstand high pressure and high temperature created by hypersonic speeds for decades, with thermal protection systems, carbon composites, and high temperature resistant metals. Once you get above Mark V, the temperature at the nose of the hypersonic craft will reach about 1650 to 2700 degrees centigrade. As the melting point of aluminium or aluminum, uh, the material used for most aircraft is about 660 degrees, Hermes is expected to make parts of their aircraft out of things like titanium and Inconel, which both perform well at high temperatures. One of the main problems that the team behind the Chimera engine are facing though is how on earth to test it, as it requires at least Mark III speeds to see if the ramjet engine actually functions effectively. Hermes has recently been developing ways to simulate these high speed, high pressure Mark IV flight environments with their most recent firings showing the system looks to be on the right track to deliver the team's vision. Hermes co-founder and CEO AJ Piplicka told CNN that a passenger aircraft would take a decade to develop, as the company for the time being is focusing on first proving out their technology with military aircraft, where the need for speed, I said it, is more likely to drive purchasing behavior. We have a ton of flying to do in that time and we'll have at least two smaller iterations of the aircraft that we'll build, test and learn from over that duration, Piplica said. Importantly, Hermes are targeting a much more modest, though obviously still pretty high, cost per flight of $3,000 for a one-way ticket between New York and London. So still not something most of us will probably take, but significantly more accessible than a $40,000 price tag. A large part of that price reduction will be a reduction in fuel requirements from shorter trips at higher engine efficiencies, though obviously this is unlikely to be a green option. No details at the moment have been released as yet to its fuel efficiency. In terms of the flight, Piplica said it will be similar to Concorde. You'll be accelerating for a longer period of time, however. Today's aircraft, you usually feel pushed back in your seat as the 
the aircraft accelerates for maybe 30 seconds to a minute or so, that experience on Halcyon will probably last for more like 10 to 12 minutes as the aircraft gets up to Mark 5. However, even 30 seconds or so in a normal airplane with that feeling is a little bit weird, so 10 to 12 minutes will be an experience. But apparently once you're up at Mark 5 at 100,000 feet or so, it should be a very smooth ride as the atmosphere up there is significantly thinner and shouldn't have much turbulence. One day you may be experiencing flights that are so fast the in-flight entertainment is just the trailers. If you like this video, you might like another breakthrough I covered recently on solar panels that may be up to 250% more efficient. Maybe one day we'll get a solar powered airplane. Maybe. As always, stay curious. I'll see you next time. Goodbye.